All right. Good morning. It's seven o two on Wall Street. About two and a half hours before the open of trading, it's time to get your global macro on and uncover the best fundamental trading opportunities. And you're you're wondering, well, Wayne, how do we do that? Oh, and I'm like, oh, it's easy. It's easy. You just have to log into government websites all around the world and gather all the data and look at sentiment and inflation and employment and GDP and look at do technical analysis on all the different uh, currency pairs and look at open trade positioning and seasonality over 20 years of data and then do comparative analysis of every single asset against and every other <laughs> asset in the world and then analyze it you see it's it's easy it just will take you all day <laughs> by the time you're done you have to start all over again or you can just automate it so anywho, so we yeah we will look at all this data, and the goal is to uncover uh, uncover the trend and then trade in the direction of that trend. Now, if the trend is sideways, you probably want to just wait, hold your horses, my friend, keep your powder dry, which means the first major benefit of uh, of quant box is probably to help you avoid losses. Now, why is that? Why why does that occur? Well, um, I'll, I'll cover that in a second. What is it, you know, uh, today we're going to look at uh, institutional positioning based on the new commitment of traders report. Uh, central banks are reporting around the world and updating our database here. So uh, their forecasts are changing. But to uncover the, um, you know, how does Quantbox per, in the very beginning at least help you prevent losses? Well, one thing that tends to occur with all investors, even institutional investors, is they keep doing the same thing because it worked yesterday, last week, and last month. And they, they don't see that things are changing. Now, the reason they don't see it is you can't see it directly. And so what we do is we look at multiple asset classes and then correlate them all and indirectly see the underlying trend, the invisible hand that's influencing the market. And uh, that's a, a, another, that's a step that, um, well, nobody does. So so anyways, there are very, very, very few people do. And we have that. And that's the underlying intrinsic trend. So look, Quantbox will bring you confidence. It'll help you, it'll help you trade in a clear and organized fashion. It'll help you trade like an institutional investor. It'll let you know when to keep your powder dry. It'll let you know when to let your winners run. And it's a whopping 80 bucks a month. It's kind of like a Bloomberg terminal for retail Forex traders, except Bloomberg terminals are $2,000 a month. So if you want to move up from amateur to small institutional investor that's what quant box will do and just imagine this is how you looked at the market things that you're bullish on things you're bearish on things you're neutral on and for logical reason like interest rates employment inflation gdp technical trends seasonality retail and institutional positioning i mean come on come on stop being an amateur let's go let's go and of course, all that message is for YouTubers, but it's good to go through and remind us as subscribers the importance of what we have in front of us. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Let me log in. Now, for those who have created their account and then upgraded that account here you also get things like the new commitment of traders report uh, emailed to you so now you don't even have to log in and i did i did get mine yeah so on friday you would have just been updated and the cool thing is you just look at it and you got it, it takes 20 seconds something that used to take me six hours of work now takes 20 seconds. And I'm not exaggerating by that. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration. 
not only did it cost me uh, six hours of my time, well, I guess that's the biggest one. Later on, I ended up doing it in just a couple of hours, but it cost me $300 a month. So 29 bucks a month gets you down to 20 seconds. Not bad. Yeah. All right. Um, mixed bag here, but let's start at the top right. Um, to regroup where, where we left off, um, a huge non-farm payrolls. And that tells the world the Fed's not going to cut anytime soon. And then as far as euros concerned, um, remember, we were pushing 1.9 to 1.10. And all of a sudden, here we are at 107. What's going on there? Um, uh, you know, France is in a political mess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Anyways, nothing new I was going to say, right? Anyways, uh, but it's there's a political mess going on in a very large European country. Le Pen, I believe her father was a politician too. Um, but anyways, uh, big stuff, big uncertainty going on, and, and uncertainty is never good for any market. So uh, Euro, have I told you you're my Euro? Um, Euro is, uh, well, not going to do well with, with uncertainty, so that is coming down. And it may be a perfect storm where, over the next few weeks, we may we may reduce the Fed interest rate cuts all the way down to one in in and in December. And if that occurs, uh, I, I would say between now and the election, there's more likely dollar strength than weakness. And so, imagine the perfect storm of political uncertainty in Europe. Meanwhile, a strong dollar, euro dollar is probably going to head down to 104, 103. You know. Tickle parody by September or October, you know, that kind of thing. It could happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but uh, that's what we need to be looking for now. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, for show. Sure. All right. So, uh, yeah, how, how are yields? So, yields popped on Friday. Mm -hmm. See, it, this is tied indirectly, like the decision-making process of the constituents that are buying and selling treasuries. The major influence is what they think the Fed funds rate will be in the future. Okay? And when you see it up, what it means is they they believe in the near future, interest rates will stay high. When it's coming down, they believe interest rates will be coming down. Morning, junkie. So, um, so anyway, so up means the rate cut has been cut. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so interest rates are not going to come down anytime soon, according to that market. And well, that's not good. All right. So, anyways, oil's up a little bit, stabilized. Okay. Uh, okay, gold, gold. We'll, we'll turn, we'll figure that out later. And Bitcoin is still below 70. We're in a sideways range right now. Uh, when I do this, I'm looking at the chart in my mind. I can see the, I can see the chart. Uh, down here, what does this tell us? Uh, risk off in, uh, in the money market and risk on. In the options market, but maybe that hasn't adjusted yet. Maybe they're going to flip. Um, so looking at risk gauges now to look at the, right? To look at the underlying intrinsic trend to see what cannot be seen. We have short-term risk off, medium-term slightly risk on. But uh, I, I would, I'm going to call this neutral because it could easily flip today. But a four is a pretty solid risk on, on the longer term. So you're going to have to kind of pick and choose what you want to do. And I know, like, for example, when I met with the day trading group at Investor Bootcamp last night, the idea was, look, you, 
based on what you see here, you could look to buy NASDAQ and you can look to sell Dow, <laughs> depending on how they set up. But they're set up to, Dow set up to fall, NASDAQ set up to rise. Which one? Well, I don't know. And then you look at this. Well, that's why I don't know, because both are happening right now in the market. And you have to understand that when you make your trades. So what I'm wondering is, you know, will will the daily, weekly, you know, roll towards risk on or will the monthly roll to risk off? Well, we need some time to figure that out. And so when you look at what happened on Friday after it was, you know, based on the NFP numbers, you would assume there's no imminent cut by the Fed. <clears throat> You get that pop. That's the money market. That's your hot money. And it went to risk off pretty pretty quickly. Okay. Risk off. See, stock market down in this situation. Oh. And and we're on interest, you know, yield, or in this case, maybe interest rate or inflation depending on how you want to interpret this is higher than normal and that's bad so that's the yeah that's short-term money mm, yields popped up to uh, 4.87 and it was 4.72 that's a huge move in one day and it could go all the way back to 50 Five O said freeze, and I got numb. Yeah. All right. So where where is the market? Okay, yields. Look at up. That's bad. <laughs> it may be expected, but it's still bad. So yields. That's a huge monster move for yields. So that that's uh, that's a bad day in the markets. But what about everything else? Uh, it, there's, I mean, look, it, this is subjective. You could argue and say, well, it looks pretty round, so we're neutral. Okay. That, okay. That, that's how you see it. That's how you see it. Others could say, well, it looks a lot like that. And that's uh, unexpected towards unexpected. And, you know, just not a good, not a good day yet, or hasn't been yet. Okay. So the market's acting like it got some monster news that could, you know, impact policy. Well, when, when does policy come out? Is it today? No. Is it tomorrow? No. Is it Wednesday? Yes. There we are. So, uh, anywho, there's the big June meeting. Then there's a July meeting. And then there's a September meeting. Okay. And uh, the world's trying to figure out when the Fed's going to cut. And, uh, well, it ain't Wednesday. And it's not July. Now, J uh, Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan said it was going to be July. No, it's not going to be July. Unless they make, unless they, they being the, the Federal Open Market Committee, Unless they're going to make a decision like they, they've already made a decision. Like, if it's going to be July, here's the logic. And, and I, I did cover this quite some time ago. I don't think it's in the cards, but let's just talk about it because Jamie Dimon is not an idiot. Um, if you were going to cut interest rates this year and you were going to do it twice and you were going to do it politically, um, you would cut once in July, once in December.
you cut on the halfway mark and you'd cut at the end zone. Okay. Middle of the year, end of the year. And you're avoiding the election with a 10 foot pole. And you're going to, and you've already decided that's the thing with the Fed. I think the, the Federal Open Market Committee is, you know, fake, fake news. <laughs> I think it's fake. I think they just decide and do whatever the, they want to do, like the voting and the dot plot. I don't know. The dot plot is people's opinions, but um, I don't believe it's unanimous, right? So could they just have agreed, like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge? Yeah, we'll do one in July. And then do one at the end of the year. Yeah, I think they could be capable of that. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's the likely scenario. So I go back to like, if they were going to cut twice, it's September, December. Okay. And it might just be December. December, is it 11th or 13th or something? Um but whatever, we're trying to figure out figure all that out. And with the red hot NFP, there's no need to cut. Hua. What did it? Where did it take me? Anyways, all right, uh, all right, we got to do our COT report. So, anyways, the Fed. There's a Fed meeting on Wednesday. Oh, December eighteenth. That's really late. Yeah, that's really late, huh? All right, so here's our our commitment of traders report. Once again, it would take me, you know, the better part of a day to analyze this by downloading the actual spreadsheet by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission and trying to sort all this out. Then I paid three hundred bucks, and and uh, a service sent me charts a chart version of this but it was you know cut it down to only a couple of hours but you know cost a lot of money and then uh, i've had various iterations over the years and uh this this one by far is the best and i have some ideas on how to improve it actually but uh this is what we have so again this is the position in your vault this is your balance this is your balance sheet Okay, down here is your cash flow. Okay, so we call this your capital stock. Okay, and um, the market is is still selling Swiss franc, right? Institutional investors are still selling Swiss franc. They're still selling yen. They're still selling CAD. Okay. They used to be bullish Aussie, now not so much. Euro, Kiwi, dollar, flat, flat, flat. Okay, long gold. Okay. Long the Japanese stock market, long silver, long oil, long copper, long platinum. You, you see physicals, right? Those are all inflation plays. Will they last? I don't know, but th that's what they are now. This is updated, okay? All right, so that's how you could organize. These are the things you probably want to sell. These are the things you probably want to buy. And this stuff in the middle is just stuck in the middle, neutral, mediocrity. So euro dollar doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So uh, 
Yeah. And uh, I'm probably going to be going to Canada this summer. So uh, sorry if I want the USD cat to go up. Sorry, it's uh, being selfish, I know. Um, but have you ever been to the Prince of Wales Hotel in southern Alberta? Man, what a place that looks like. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's let's organize it. Okay. And look at the flip on this. This is extraordinary. And I talked about this last night in the day trading group too. We're like, this could be a major turning point. And I wasn't looking at this when I said it. But there are patterns on the chart that say, huh, maybe the yen isn't so weak. Or maybe there's just going to be some profit taking. Or maybe there's a, a change at the bank. Or But like this ain't the old yen trade that we've had for two years. That's what it said on the charts. Now we look at here. And okay, the market is still eighty-one percent short yet. Okay, that, that that but that's just the capital stock. Eighty-one point zero two. That's just where we are now. Okay, but there was a change last week. We lost twelve thousand bears, and they all became bulls. Oh, what? Yeah. Holy smokes, eh? Very, very significant. I mean, that's a 180 for that 6.5% of bears. 6.5% change week over week, and they all became bulls. They switched teams. Does that matter? Uh-huh. Oh, oh my, oh my, yeah, oh my, my, oh my, that does matter. What about the pig? 5.5% change and 8,000 less bears and 9,000 more bulls. Same thing, complete 180, but it's already bullish. It's already uh, 60, 40, 63, 36. Right, two thirds, one third long. It's two thirds long already, and becoming more bullish. Did you notice the pound strength last week? Uh huh. This is it. This is real institutional investors, and a significant shift from bearishness to bullishness. It's not like they just left and they're like, "Forget it. I'm going on summer holidays." No, 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 no. Bears are now buying. Okay. And the great big pig is way over here now, huh? There, there you go. Two-thirds long. And gaining strength. Maybe you love the pound. Okay. Remember, this is institutional money here. This is all we're tracking is institutional money. And the, Okay. A 4.9% increase in the kitty cat. And once again, bears became bulls. This is very unusual, by the way. You're like, of course they became bulls. No, 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 that's not true at all. You can sell your position and walk away. That's what usually happens. No, 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 they're changing sides. And it's across the bar board so far. Bears are becoming bulls. Wow. Well, I don't see, I don't see it in the Kiwi yet. But look, this market's 50-50. Well, that makes sense. But is it is it going to go 60-40, 70-30? Like, is this a change? Maybe. Maybe. we got to be aware of that. But like NASDAQ is much different, right? So anyways, right? 
the 50 50 this is 60 40 this is 66 33 so you 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 can see the pound moving but it's it's much more bullish than kiwi right now okay yeah and then i would suspect under the new news <clears throat> Uh, under the new, uh, b because what happened this weekend, which is not influenced here, uh, Euro could get a big hit in, to its position. I think, uh, I you know, I, I think people just might want to go neutral on Euro. Dow. Okay, less bulls, more bears. And I've had this set up as a sell for a good week, and it's still not quite moving yet, but it does feel like it's in the cards. In particular, when you look at that, less bulls, more bears. Okay, uh, but it's still 63% long. S&P 500, look at this, okay, five. 5% change, right? So you're like, oh, it's very bearish. Well, actually, people just walked away. These guys took profit, and now they're on summer vacation. The market is neutral, and we lost bulls and we lost bears. We just happened to lose more bulls. So S&P 500 is down. But not because people are selling. Well, not because bears are selling. Bulls sold and then they walked away. Boy, it's nice to be able to thread a narrative around these candles, huh? To, you, to actually know the human behavior. So the thing is, these bulls can come back at some point and buy it low. Okay. And these bears, by the way, you might say, well, they're, they're hedging. No, they're not. We removed the hedgers from this. Okay. So anyways, uh, yeah, these these bulls can come, come back at any point. They took profit at the top, and they're walking away. Now, what I said back in January, if you don't mind me going all the way back to there, that the stock market would peak between June and July, in particular Canada Day, July 1st. So by the time we get to July 1st, it'll probably peak, and then it would fade. It'll slowly fall January, or sorry, uh, July and August. At no rally in the third week of August. And then down in September. And no rally in the third week of September. And then it'll kind of stabilize around October. And then there will be two trading opportunities, one in like middle of October and another one in the middle of November, depending if you're going to front run or buy the vol after the election. Cool. That's what I said in January. So are we getting there? Maybe. Maybe. See, if it was going to be a slow fade till October, then you would just be losing bulls, but nobody's really selling. People are just going to cash and waiting for the election, you see? All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Loaded, loaded, loaded. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's do a little seasonality. Do, do, do. Okay, so the pound is strong. Let's take a look at pound yen. 
Well, that's not right. Come on, pound. Let's just do all the ends. There we go. All right. So what I was trying to point out in the day trading group on Sunday evening is that in my mind, and I, I didn't have Quantbox open at the time, in my mind, somewhere around here, I stopped buying yen pairs. Now I can quantify it, yeah. The five-year history of pound yen and the 20-year history of pound yen says in a normal year, and this is not a normal year, so what I said in January is you got to shift everything over six or seven weeks, shift the, the shape of the accumulation. But nonetheless, uh, somewhere, and, and, you know, we're right here. This is where we are now, okay? And over the last five years, the, the yen pairs tend to go up in, in the period we're in right now, but over 20 years, they don't. And then over the five-year period, July to August is down. And over 20 years, July and August is down. Okay? Then typically, okay, again, I'm talking about typical years. And this is what I learned from trading for 20 years, not using seasonality. But the third week of August is my, usually, my usual buy. And it's become the third week of September more recently there's been a shift over the years and now i can visually see it <laughs> and it's extraordinary because i'm like yep that's my life <laughs> on a chart okay and this year what i'm saying is this is going this is how this is what it's going to look like this year so i, I I'll, I'll do a uh, purple line so if we're in July, I, and I don't know if my mouse is going to do this. If we're in July, it's going to look like this. This year. And if you want to know why, it, I can't explain it. It's supermodel stuff. You know, it's something they teach at supermodel school. So you'll have to just trust me. Right, but uh, all, all I'm saying is we're approaching a potential peak in the market. And if the yen pairs want to come down, and we just saw a massive change in attitude toward the end, um, yeah, it could fall just in a normal year, it could fall almost two months. Two months. Now, remember. Quant box brings you the strength to let your winners run. If you ended up observing technically on your charts, a, a yen pairs falling and you sold them and you're able to move your stop to break even after a day, then on day two, you're probably up a hundred pips or 75 pips. And you're like, should I take it? And you're like, well, okay, history tells us it'll fall probably till the third week of September. But Wayne says it could fall to, you know, the, the third week of October to the second week of November and then head up. So you could have one month, two months, three, three and a half months, maybe. Do you think it's worth more than 75 pips? Yeah, probably. So, yeah. So Quantbox doesn't make you trade more. It makes the value of your trades higher. Because you know these things. Cool. Neato. Right on. 
Anything else going on? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Actually, I want to go here. Yeah, oil's trying to make a run. Nasdaq's trying to hang on. So I'm, I'm, I'm bullish Nasdaq, neutral on S and P 500, and bearish on Dow. And Dow's over here, flat for the last seven days. But this could be an interesting week. Friday was counter to what it, the market wanted to see, which is a Fed cut sooner than later, and they didn't get that information. And uh, and then we have the interest rate decision coming up on Wednesday. So we're expecting a buck eighty two. And we got 272. Last month, we were expecting 238 and only got 175. And then the revision on Friday for last month came in at 165. So that this was actually better. So if I were me, okay, if I were me, I would look. Oops. Okay. I would look at the red number as being the real number. And I wouldn't even look at 272. I'd just say they didn't have enough time to do the, the survey correctly. They rushed it. They used a bunch of math to make up for that. And uh, the margin of error is extraordinary. So I would say 272 probably is not the not the right number. So what, what they're saying is, if you look at this, 272 is right above this dotted line. And this is something that I put on this page. The average non-farm payroll is going all the way back. Now, I, I think I went too far back. I think what I, I should probably do is only go back 12 months so we can get the, the annual you know, 12-month average or something. But going all the way back to January 2023, the average is 263, and we were above that average. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And only expecting this number, 182. So we blew the doors off of that. And oops. And if I scroll down, you'll you'll see that. Boom! We were off like a bunch. But the question is, did we really go from 165 to 272, or is there an error built into that cake? I don't know. I would expect a big re revision. Somehow it seems it seems uh, erratic, right? How could you go from... 220, you know, 230, 270, 315, 165. And then boom, back up again. Really? Why so volatile, huh? Okay, why so volatile? All over the map there. But like I said, I think the real numbers are the red numbers, but even then there's some volatility to that, huh? Look at this one back in January. We we thought 170. We got 216 and then it was revised 333. Holy smokes. Yeah. And then by May, half of that. Yeah, so anyways. So this shows the difference, right? So we were trending down and then pop red, red, red hot June number. And that takes that takes the interest rate cut off the table. But you know what? Like, do we have this number in here? This was the other thing that bothered me. Is wages went uh was this revised? I thought it was 3.8. This has changed. Were these revised? That's interesting. I swear this was 
and now it's 4.0. Oh, that's interesting. And then this is now 4.1. And uh, I thought this was 3.8, and I was hoping for 3.7. That's interesting. Now it says 4.1. Huh. It, so it pulled. It's pulling from a table, obviously. So the, something changed the table. And so what's in the what is in the coding? Like, did they revise wage growth from three eight to four, and that's why it's recording that? Interesting. I'll have to see if that could be manipulated. Show the old versus now, old versus new. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we should be below four on wage growth, and and it, we're back to four point one. And what this is telling us, of course, is inflation is going to stay around. Okay, so no need to cut if you're worried about inflation, huh? Okay. We got to three nine on un unemployment. We're trying to get it to four. But that, you know, unemployment up, the Fed is okay with all that, right? So anyways, that's really quite something. And then I think you're going to see euro dollar move over the next several days or even weeks. And I would assume to bearishness right now, it's neutral. But it looks like this technical trend is now bearish. I I believe it was bullish. I think I think this had a pretty good score before, but now it doesn't. And, and then I suppose as a trader and an investor, I'm looking into the future and I figure it's going to be worse off. So let me I know it says euro dollar, but you gotta bring it up properly. Yeah. So now the price isn't working. For some reason, this doesn't work properly for Euro dollar. Too bad, huh? But, anyways, uh, bullish, bullish, like, right? Look at 12, 13, 12, 12, 13, 13, 11, 14, 14, 11, 11, 11, right? 12, 11, 8, 8, 3, 0, 1. Look how quickly Quantbox is adjusting. Isn't that cool? This 1.11 that it's supposed to be the price of the euro dollar. I don't know why it's glitching on me. But dude, Quantbox is screaming at you. On the fourth, it was 11. On the fifth, it was an eight. On the seventh, it was a three. And on the eighth, it was a zero. Whoa. Now, Simon said, would you sell it with uh, a negative one? Well, that means there's more things bearish than bullish, but you could also be selling the, the, the change in direction. But yes, if you wanted to be a, 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 you know, a purist, so to speak, if you wanted to wait until things are macro bearish for euro dollar, then yeah, you, you, you could. Yeah, you'd wait. But you could also anticipate. So, Simon, when I say France over the weekend put itself into a political nightmare, and one of the largest economies in Europe is going to be probably at best stagnant, but not just between now and the snap election, but based on the almost certain outcome they're, they're going to have a hung parliament, so to speak, for the next two to three years because they'll have a president and a prime minister from radically different parties, which means nothing is going to get passed in France. No kind of reform, no major law, no, 
no improvements, just whatever. It just the likely outcome is France will be a sitting duck politically. And uh, I think Macron, the um, presidential election is what, in three years. So it'll be a political mess in, in, until this new election occurs. And then three years after that, be be um, stalemate. Is that good for France? No, no, it's not. So sell so the euro, right, Simon? And here's the thing. Let's say you're like, dude, Wayne, let me be honest with you. I wasn't watching the political elections in France and Italy over the weekend. <laughs> I was barbecuing. I was mowing the lawn. I was doing regular folk stuff. Okay, cool. You have Quant Box. Boom! It went from a 14 to a zero. Incredible, huh? How quickly it, it adjusted. Thank you, Quant Box. So look, you're like, I don't know nothing about nothing except I'm neutral. Hmm. Good. Okay. Good. Interest rates were cut 0 0.25 by the ECB. Hey, isn't it nice? We have it. We have it right there. Isn't that nice? Europe. 6.4% unemployment. The sad thing is that's good. <laughs> okay, what? Yeah, it's Europe. Okay, the United States, their GDP collapsed to 1.3. And European GDP improved significantly to 0.3. What an amazing difference, huh? Wow. Inflation, 2.6 versus 3.4 in the two economies. If I asked you what the major difference is between the two, would, would you be able to give me an answer? Is Europe really that much better off? Europe doesn't count rent. But rent is one of the two sticky inflations. Wages and rents are sticky. They don't even count it. They're like, we don't have that kind of inflation. Oh, really? <laughs> of course they do. They don't measure it. So anyways, good for them. Okay. And then look at seasonality, guys. This is what I was saying. If we've now approached the top of euro dollar, just in a normal year, this could drop to September or October. That's why I'm like, hey, maybe, maybe we're on our way to 103. Maybe we're going to tickle parity before a rally at the end of the year. Good to know, right? Good to know. All right, so for those that are in summer school, right, what'll happen on Mondays, you meet at noon, and we have incredibly awesome sessions planned for Mondays at noon. Eastern time. So that's right after the London close. So, you know, trading won't get in the way. That's all right. And uh, great. So today is the first day. Be ready for that because it's the setting of the stage um, webinar, right? All right. Cool. And then Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, you're going to meet. Um, London Open, New York Open. 
Yeah. So 3 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time and 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So you'll get, so we'll finish our quant box like right around now. And then you'll go over to trade ours. And, and, and by the way, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, two sessions a day, make at least one of them. The other one, they're all recorded, right? But they're live events, live market uh, trading events. And you imagine doing that, right? Twice on Tuesdays, twice on Wednesdays, twice on Thursdays, right? For weeks, you're really, you're going to, you're, you know, you're going to get razor sharp, right? How many peeps? Uh, there's less than a million burned. My goal was 1.1 million, but I'm not going to hit it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways it, it, just be aware that for the next four or five weeks um these events are highly part participative meaning like you don't necessarily have to get in front of the camera and, and get involved if you're like i don't want to do that kind of stuff you don't have to but just bear in mind you're going to need to implement what you're learning it's interactive and like you don't just sit and watch other people improve. You need to be doing this yourself and you need to be thinking about it. And then ideally, those that have that type of personality, the ones that say, hey, can we talk about what I've been doing and you can get feedback? That's the fastest way to learn. But it's not. Right. It's not a PowerPoint presentation that you're going to get. Uh, you may not see any PowerPoints. Maybe. Maybe today in the first session as you just kind of uh, set the stage. But after that, there's there's no PowerPoint. <laughs> this is getting your hands dirty. It's like, like I, I like to use the golf analogy. You're bringing your golf clubs. You're going to hit some balls. Okay? It's one of those, right? Yeah, Bern, it's not crowded. No, 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 no. <clears throat> No, but the idea is uh, most of these sessions are going to be direct. They're going to be short. They're going to be focused. And you need to also be practicing. And then the, the Monday ones are, to me, very, very exciting. I can't wait to see how those go. They're very, very exciting where, um, yeah, it, it's just, again, if I were to use the golf analogy uh you you go golfing tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays with your coach and you're working on things and you're doing very specific things and then on monday you bring it all back and you're like okay let's watch the videos let's see let's see what you're doing all right let's go let's go practice your stance a little bit better let's go practice this let's go practice that let's focus on where you're aiming let's focus on your swing you're, you're too steep, you know, let's focus on these really details. And that's what Mondays are about. So anyways, uh, that, that starts today. It's happened. Okay. Well, you'll see burn. This is a tactical course. There's, there's not a lot of, you know, you're not going to have to write down paragraphs worth of stuff. It's like, this is how you do it. And everything else sucks. <laughs> right like that's what it is this is what you look for you don't need many notes <clears throat> yeah simon i'm sure you can google it noon eastern time Like I said, it, the the London London markets close at eleven thirty a.m. New York time, so twelve. Okay, so that would be five o'clock in London, for example. Yeah. Yep. So, anyways, uh, very very good. And then the rest are at the market opens, and you know, 
yeah uh well since you guys are asking i'm just uh tradars.com summer school if you're not sure right there and then when you log in it's there yeah you're in yeah well you know what <laughs> simon yeah you you still have google in, in australia yeah yeah so yeah it's going to be late for you yeah for sure yeah it's difficult but you know what this is probably good for you and this is probably not good for you but right Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. You know, I don't really do that, though, do I? I know. I guess that stuff's traditional. I'm like, it's more like I, I make it, I think, very reasonably priced. And then I just let you know, if you want it, sign up. If you don't, I'm not going to talk you into it. <laughs> so I don't know. I could be a better marketer. I'm too old for that crap. You either want it or you don't, right? So anyways. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Sonars is, yeah. Totally. No, the, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Let me see if it's not clear. News pattern sonars is here. Trade alerts is when you get multiple emerging patterns that say the same thing on different time. Well, different patterns that say the same thing on the same right so uh it'll be you'll get a a trade alert sent to you if like the two or three bullish patterns appear on the euro yen at the same time and the idea is if three different patterns say up the probability is favorable let's say it's more favorable if you see two or three patterns at the same time on the same asset and so we'll email you so that you know yeah burn uh i know what you're saying but i'm highly against that i'm extremely against that so there's a there's a famous youtube real estate person we'll say you probably know who i'm talking about and he's built a huge empire in the, just the last five or six or seven years, mostly on YouTube. It's like a second career for him. Like a, he was doing something else, and then all of a sudden YouTube really, um, ex he exploded, right? And he puts his kids on stage. and the, His daughters grew up with him being a YouTuber, and so now they go on stage and they talk and stuff. And I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I would never want that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I I protect my children. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I know. It's just not my personality. I hate it. But, you know, that's just me. I'm... I'm broken. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The cats maybe, right? <laughs> and the well, the funny thing is I adopted two orange cats. I I think it's so funny. Still when they're eating breakfast and I have these two cats and their tails are doing this and I'm like, "Dude, I have two orange cats." <laughs> Like, how the hell did that happen? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But anyways, uh, so yeah, you're you're right, it would work, but uh I I that's that's not my intent. But anyways, 
So uh, cool. Like, look how awesome Quant Box is. Uh, you got summer school going on. Uh, CIA, we meet on Wednesday. Remember that. So that's going to take up your day. You're, you, you got a very, very busy week. Yep. Um, cool. And the markets are likely to move and the markets are likely to change. And for most people, it'll be very difficult for you to, for them to see. Uh, but for you, it's easy to see because you have quant box. Cool. So, uh, I'll let you, I'll let you be peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. I'll see you over at Forex.today. Huh? Cheers.